On this episode, episode eight of Pick Rich's Brain, we're talking to the three kings. Oh my God, 20 years of working together, working with bands like Rushlow, Jason Aldean. We talk about the evolution of the music business in Nashville and a new series called Ask the Best. <laughs> Drummer, percussionist, author, composer, songwriter, producer, professional speaker, actor. Rich Redmond has left his mark on thousands of songs, including over 21 number one hits. Over 30 years of been there, done that, wisdom and knowledge in the Nashville music business. This is Pick Rich's Brain. Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? Episode eight of Pick Rich's Brain. Wait, We're shooting it. Eight episode. <laughs> episode wow. eight. We had to really cut our teeth. This is the debut. <laughs> As you can tell, this is going to be a fantastic episode. People have really been looking forward to this episode because who are my guests for episode eight of Pick Rich's Brain live from Craft Studio? Beautiful. Braniac, Tennessee. We have Mr. Kurt Allison and Tully Kennedy. Together, we're the three, three kings. The three kings are in the house right here, beautiful Nashville, Tennessee. So we are gonna be talking about all things music, motivation, and success today. Now, I've been playing music with these gentlemen for eight, 18 years. How many, oh. how many presidencies is that? That's a lot of ex-wives, ex-girlfriends, clothing hey, styles have come and gone, <laughs> hairstyles have come and gone. This is a relationship that is steeped in blood, sweat, tears, and diesel fuel. We've been to 16 countries together. We've played for the U.S. military in strange places like Croatia and Sarajevo and South Korea, and we've had a Guinness in Ireland. We're, We've had fresh salmon in Newfoundland. We've been, been to, we've been to Smyrna. <laughs> we've been to Smyrna together, and we've we've recorded together a little bit about this collective pedigree. We don't want to pat ourselves on the back too much, but this doesn't happen in Nashville. Three individuals, a three-headed hydra, that make a commitment to each other, a commitment that has lasted longer than wives and girlfriends. I will tell you, I see I these gentlemen. <laughs> I see these gentlemen more than I see my. My blood brothers, my family, anyone. That's true. We, Unfortunately, true. We've missed many a wedding, many a graduation, many a funeral. Births. Births. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Tony's totally son Keller's over here, and he's like, "Yeah, Dad, you weren't around when I was born." <laughs> and that's why, if you want to go see Escape from the Planet of the Apes or Battle from the Planet of the Apes, you can go. Sure. Whatever you want on Daddy's credit card. Okay, <laughs> so this is going to be such a great episode, and we are taking your questions live via Facebook. Where can you find this broadcast? Well, at my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Rich Redmond. There's over 350 videos. All eight episodes of this web series are going to be on there. And, of course, Google Play, iTunes, and Stitcher, and, of course, richredmond.com. Our good man, Jim McCarthy, my right-hand man, my muse, is keeping me on track. He's behind the camera. Hey. Jim. Yes. Say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, Jim, usually we get the promosexuality out of the way. We promote some stuff. What are we working on? What do we want to remind everybody about? Uh, YouTube channel. YouTube.com. Subscribe to your YouTube channel. Please and subscribe. In order to win a brick of sticks. Do I have to give a brick away? A brick. What kind of brick are you talking about? Not a just, a, 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 just, a, just a whole brick of my sticks? A brick of your sticks. Oh, are you talking about my signature Active series. Grip 595 Promark Series drumsticks? Uh, available at Amazon oh, and Guitar shame. Center I all over the world. I didn't oh. know I was God. doing an infomercial today. Yeah. Well, we get, the, we get the infomercial stuff out of the way. So, yeah, make sure you subscribe and like my YouTube channel. It's for your benefit. There's a lot of educational behind-the-scenes stuff on there, and you can win a brick of my sticks. What, what exactly. is a brick of sticks? A brick of sticks is twelve pairs, and which is good because they're they're twenty dollars sticks at the store. So I've been um, using. Your, I, I played my drums last night, and I just now like a little shard of wood came off. People are loving the sticks. You guys in metal bands are playing my sticks, and they're saying, "My God, these sticks last forever." Right. So check them out. What else, um, Jim? Drumming in the modern world. Drumming in the modern world. Dot com. Right. Six and a half hours of online training for your musical career. You want to be a drummer in Nashville and try to navigate whatever we do. This country rock pop music that we're doing in Nashville. Everything I know about drumming from the last 40 years, and especially the last 20 years in Nashville, is right there at drumminginthemodernworld.com. For 150 bucks, you get the whole enchilada. I was about to ask about the whole enchilada. You get the whole enchilada. It's a, and whose idea was that? That was mine. I know I said, you know I said, there's. let's get this picture of a giant enchilada in Photoshop with me holding it. And it's, it's just funny. Yeah. It's just fun. You know. It was fun. What else, Jim? Um, <laughs> I can't think of anything else. Okay, so then the, the promosexuality is out of the way. Kevin Murphy, Murphquake, if you're watching, he called me. Rich is not 
a drummer, he's a promosexual. You know what? I'll take it as a compliment. Maybe we'll have Kevin Murphy on the show one day and it'll be like frick and frack, oil and water. It'll be so much fun. If anybody needs his own podcast, it's him. Yeah, he definitely should be doing it. I know it. somebody who can produce that. He's the delightful curmudgeon. He should. If you haven't gotten the delightfulcurmudgeon.com, Kevin Murphy, you should, if you can spell curmudgeon. Okay, moving on. <laughs> We've got Kurt and Tully. We're here. Guys, Tell us, tell the listeners a little bit about this relationship. The first thing that comes to your mind, Kurt, we met, I met through your dad. Yeah, that was uh, 20 years ago. 20 years ago. Stupid. Uh, in Printer's so, Alley. Yeah, I played with my dad and his band forever. I got out of high school at 18 and went on the road with him. <clears throat> Long story short, we had come to Nashville and he's always on the lookout for talent, cheap talent. <laughs> Smart. Right, I think we were. Enter Redmond. <laughs> I was the right price point at the time. <laughs> you were cheap. You were talented. Anyway, he saw you drumming. Where was it? Um, it was in Printer's Alley Printer's at Alley. Barbara's. Barbara's. Mm. Barbara's. So uh, you came over and sat in at Club Mirabal. Yes. Wow. Wow. Which was Steve Dakin was in the band, wasn't he? Steve Dakin. Oh. And 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 uh, Buddy Leach was in the band, who plays saxophone for. Uh, and you know that during that time period, speaking of Dakin, I wonder if he's watching. We should Steve Dakin. That's we when Steve. Winona came in to see the band. She took a liking to Mr. Steve. <laughs> Steve, Steve, and Winona dated briefly. Well, no, no, no. They did. Let's not put that out. They didn't date. They didn't. <laughs> Sorry, Christy. Oh, uh, what? No, no, no. I think we went on a date. There was a date, but it wasn't dating. Ah. Wow. Anyway, didn't know that. Side note. <clears throat> Good for Dick. Anyway, so Rich came in. What was the song you played? I remember. Brick House. Uh, Brick House. And then Kurt and I just, he, you were wearing white leather pants. Pleather. Pleather. And then, you know, we, we totally hit it off. And then before you knew it, we, I was working with your dad's band. Yeah. And the, the band is called The Blues Other Brothers. Yeah. There was a lot of material, Neo Soul stuff, Stax Records, uh, mm -hmm. Motown, yeah. and, but Vegas style, a lot of beefed up tempos. We played a lot of casinos, a lot of private parties, a lot of corporates. Super, super fun. And then we grew that relationship into where in 98, we were doing some work with Rana Reeves, who's now a world-class song plugger here on Music Row in Nashville. But at the time, she had a pop career, and her record was produced by Peter Cetera. Right. So we were playing with her. Yeah. And then 1999 <laughs> comes along, and Tully moved, you moved here in 96? 96, yeah. You moved here one year before me, mm -hmm. and your uncle was writing at Warner Chapel Music. Yeah, I was uh, from New England area, upstate New York and Canada, and playing out in bands from like, you know, 14 to 20, like, t you know, and a milk local, local touring bands and vans and trailers and did that. And then um, my uncle was a staff writer at Warner Chapel here. And so I decided to give it a try and I wanted to, you know, play in records and do bigger things. So I moved in 96 and then did all kinds of stuff to, you know, make ends meet, play music, you know, played every kind of, every bar you could imagine with, you know, every gig, no matter where it was, and then I did that, and I ended up going overseas for all of 98. Um, to Italy. To Italy to play for Disney in this big horn band, which oddly enough that <laughs> we didn't know it until a couple years you know, down the road, but these guys it's had both funny. got the gig as well. We had all auditioned. We had all auditioned at several times, times, and we all yeah. got the gig, and I actually got the gig and then I changed my mind and I didn't want to do it <laughs> after taking three months of advanced pay. <laughs> so I was like, because I got a, uh, uh, a gig playing the for, the, for the Lynn's. And, yeah. uh, Loretta Lynn's daughter. And I thought maybe that'd be a, you know, any, but I'll never, I'll never forget it. I went to, uh, to have lunch with the, one of my base heroes here, Mike Brunardello, who's a first class guy, mm -hmm. world class bass player. Yeah. I went to have lunch with him. I was probably tw 23 years old or whatever. And I said, Mike, what should I do? I'd, I can go on the road with the lens. And we're opening for Winona. <laughs> this might Ball be a theme star, yeah. Yeah. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> and I said, I can do that or I can go to Italy and I can play in this 12 piece horn band and playing cover songs. He goes, bye. Yeah, take the gig. Take the gig. Go so I went and did work, it. Go to where the work is. Yeah. So I went back. So I went to. Uh, to rehearse um, for weeks and months, um, and then I changed my mind again. <laughs> this is a great story. And then yeah, I changed my mind again, and then 
a couple weeks later, they called me up and um, said, we really want you to do the gig. We'll give you a little bit more to do it. And I went and did it. I flew out to Las Vegas and uh, and, and rehearsed in Vegas for You know, it's a lot, and I know we've talked about this, but when I had gotten the gig as well, I went out to Vegas. I remember you... But I... I got to tell a story because I was in when I committed to the gig. I'm in Vegas, right? And I'm and I'm like one of my stipulations in this was I didn't like the guitar player that was in this band. So why did you like him? I he, I just didn't like him. I, I As he a human? Uh, he was a he was a decent human. He was a below decent player. So I so I uh, below I, decent. So part of my stipulation to going back there was to Love get life. this other guitar player, and and Bob Sigler. Bob Sigler yeah. said to me, "I've got the guy." <laughs> He's going to be there. Well, I get out to Vegas, 1997. This was 97 oh at this point. Yeah. And I get there, and same guitar player. I said, Bob, what happened? He goes, well, the guy we had backed out. So what happened? I went to Vegas, but you weren't there at that time. I just missed you. That's crazy. Yeah. Because yeah, I, so yeah, I went you auditioned went. or did something. Before they called me back, you went. Yeah. And, and I, I was offered out. the job. Can you imagine all of us on a on a beautiful anyway. boat on the high seas in Italy, traveling the world? It was Who amazing. Knows what happened? It was it was amazing. It was a. But then, um, you know, I got back from there, and then I met. And instead of being sorry, to, <laughs> instead of being on a beautiful boat in Italy, we went to Donaldson and lived together. We lived. We lived together, guys and gals. We lived together for for an appropriately. Long, inappropriately, inappropriately long. long. You were living in Donaldson then, though. No, I mean after. I said instead of being on a boat in Italy, we lived in Donaldson we yeah, and we together in together. Donaldson. Yeah, yeah. We decided to skip that part and go into Donaldson. <laughs> that took a while, though. Like, like it did. But I, I, I tell you this, you know, after it was skip a few years, but after um, I got back from the Disney thing, and it was '99, and I met and started playing with Kurt directly after that, and then mm-hmm. Kurt and Rich, and we all met. Fast forward, if, if you're if you're wanting to do this in Nashville and you're young and you're wanting to give it a try, we really did, you know, starve for the music and want to be a team, and that that's kind of what got us to where we are. Honestly, I don't, you know, I, I know I wouldn't be where I'm at without these guys, um, and that's and that and I love saying that. That's not a something I'm I'm not proud of. I'm very proud of that, like because I don't think you can do anything without the help of brothers and lifting you up and I was always the youngest one I, and I had a lot to learn musically that these guys you know I'm the youngest one <laughs> rub it in <laughs> um, now, so, it used to be a uh, a bad thing right now it's the yeah, yeah. I'm the youngest one no but I did these guys taught me a, a lot um, Rich taught me a lot about you know playing better time and playing in the pocket playing behind me I was always ahead and just aggress- aggressive and pushing everything and he taught me to hold back and and, and play McCurr is the right hand so good. It just locked in really well. So it was a, it was a great. I wouldn't trade a second of that. It's rare, yeah. right, to yeah. find three humans. I mean, obviously, like you know, we have our things. Like Kurt is Switzerland. You and I fight like brothers. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot better. But back in the day, oh my god. Um, but the the fact that we can keep three people working towards a common goal for. 18 years. Yeah, yeah it's a it's beyond time. rare. It's, it's uh, maybe an aberration. It's it's yeah. it's very very. We're lucky and we're all blessed. I think, yeah. like Tully said, you know, we've uh, we've enriched each other's lives uh, in more ways than one. And we I love you guys. Yeah. <laughs> with yeah, that, we, yeah, yeah, with with that came hard decisions. Uh, all different times, we were all offered separate gigs in this time period before Jason before. Tully would always talk me off the ledge and be like, but this person's got 20 more dates and they're paying a little bit more. And he's like, stay the course, uh, uh, You know what? That is true. Because I would, yeah. I would be always like, I want to play. I'm a player. I got to play. You know? And we were we were playing every night. It was just we all we all got offered to go out and, and do road gigs that would offer, at the time, <laughs> steady money. Um, but it wasn't together. And, it, and every time I played without these guys, whether it was some random showcase or some random session, uh, I was miserable. So you'd be like, "You're not rich. You're not tall." Yeah, it's 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 a uh, <laughs> yeah. It, it never really worked out. So um, there's a lesson in there somewhere that if you, what is it? If you can find the if you find people that you can play with, if you find people you can play with and make you happy, 
and it's not going to be roses all the time. But if you have so, we have something very special musically. We it's you know, uh, it just fighting goes for, beyond so. yeah. you know it's just playing music together. Like, it is yeah. uh, it's eerily uh, there's uh, you know a brotherhood that when we're playing together, it's and it's magic. And yeah. I think we found that out every once in a while. We'd, we'd drift off and we'd play with other people. And it was great, but it's like, man, this is magic. Yeah, it's you know? good, but it's not, it doesn't have the unique swagger or the, or the little intricate things that are a band that make it special, mm. you know? And that, 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 that to me is what I'm most proud of is sticking together. And Jason included, in, in fast forward a couple years after that, meeting Jason and Jason, mm and Michael Knox giving us a chance to do that together in the studio when no one else would. We were we were really green as far as, I know. You I know, didn't belong. I and the studio belong. was very, Michael really got us in there. And, Michael Knox. And kind of showed us, or at least gave us the time to be in the studio and, and, and learn it and mess up and make mistakes and kind of figure out how to do it. So it's... Yeah, some people are patient. It's, it's, he was yeah. a very patient soul that wanted, if you want something different, he wanted something different than, than hiring the same five. Yeah, he saw our vision of what of, this could be. Yeah, and now here we are. Just last week, we recorded Jason Aldean's eighth record. So there's a body of work there, and there's definitely, you know, somebody asked me a question. A friend of mine said, hey, can you answer a question about, like, like what is the process like, and are you responsible for this new sound? I said, being responsible for a new sound, that's a lot of weight to carry on your shoulders, and that would be a lot of back patting ourselves on the back I said what it is it's a collective group of people who give each other creative freedom and creative freedom comes from a thing called trust <laughs> which is very hard to find yeah. because money talks and I think we change I, I do appear ourselves a little bit we we change the sound in this <laughs> yeah, let's pat ourselves I, a little bit. just a little bit in the Sorry. sense that and this is credit to Michael and Jason yeah. was that we're rock players I know. I, I. I. mean. I know. Kurt. I know. I speak for myself. Rich is the, the most versatile player. Van Halen. But I'm, a, I'm a street. I I'm a street player. Like I, I taught myself how to play. Learned to play. That's why we work together. It's it's angst and it's raw. But he can do everything. So it's that's polished a little bit too. But intertwining together. But we brought that to country music. And it's Michael's. It's Michael's vision because we just played how we would play. We weren't slick and polished and and country players so in a sense we did move the sound that way but we were we were allowed to radio heard it and the timing which is everything in this business timing allowed us to change it then yeah i remember you distinctly know. having a conversation with jason and michael <clears throat> when you know you had brought me in and i was like man i had a, i can't play country and they're like, perfect. That's what we want. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm in. Is that even back then in '05 when Hicktown came out? That was that was a noticeable song. It was, and if if you back up to '02 and '03 and '04 when we were playing showcases with Jason before Hicktown came out, there was no guitars in country. Country music was was kick and snare, a vocal, acoustic guitar, steel and fiddle. Yeah. And then further on down the road with She's Country, you tuned down. <laughs> Drop yes. D, right. and yes. actually C sharp, like yes. Kids yes. X. So we were. That's, that's, that's something that's you're getting into metal territory. Now. But it was but, very. But you yeah. know, when we first went, when we first out, first went out with Jason, it was Jason and us three in T G Shepherd's old bus with the velvet painting oh, wow. of the dogs playing poker, and we didn't know if the bus was going to make it, and we, and then before you know it, it was like we looked forever to find that second electric electric player mm -hmm. that could fit with Kurt mm -hmm. and then we were like do we hire keys no do we hire a fiddle no, no. we find, had to find the right but now now you look at the instrumentation of all country bands and literally it's bass drums two electrics yeah it was unheard of then it was like and Ableton. And, and now now it doesn't seem like it was so <laughs> yeah. it was yeah it, it was it was just it the way uh, then to go out there with the four of us and play a show and then add electric, another electric was just, you know, that's what rock bands like, you know, Fuel were doing, not, mm -hmm. you know, Jason Aldean, <clears throat> new artist. So, but that's kind of what pushed his his voice with his image. Yeah, we could do it be, in a way. He allowed us. He allowed, he sounds, his, his, he's, uh, he's got, sound. we've talked, I mean, I mean, God, we're in this, I'm in this 20 years now with Jason and I, I still say it every night. It's like, the guy is Sings got an great. undeniable powerful voice, and that allows us to play the way we do. He's got 
he's got a southern sounding voice it's country rock he's got the image that allows us to be what we are and it balances it out so it's it's very uh, timing and, and, and it's one once in a lifetime it, it's lightning in a bottle it's it it's once in a lifetime but he does I've never heard the guy have a bat he sings consistently yeah, so consistent. every night every night you know and that allows us to to it play would, hard it would suck know? to have to back play. it would yeah. suck to back up a chick that's like mm, you know <laughs> I don't feel like, like oh that would suck I would be behind a, some salad guard you know and these guys would have pods on stage and it would be it would be <laughs> horrible um, pods went out right yeah, um, but it, uh, so how about some questions we'll break it up we'll, well, we'll, I was just going to say yeah. that even with the stage presence you guys have the energy is palpable coming off the stage you give mm -hmm. it your all every night and yeah. And that's not contrived either. No. You know, that's uh, amazingly enough, every night, that's part of what this is too, and, you know, including Jason and uh, Jack and Jay as well. I mean, the, we get up there and it starts with Rich mm -hmm. and Tully and it just feeds and it goes through all of us and Jason delivers it. It's uh, very rarely, I think, unless somebody isn't feeling well. <laughs> Stomach ache. I mean, even if you do have a stomach thing, I mean, we've had accidents on stage. Here. What are you gonna do? You gotta play. Yeah, and we, we're you very. Play. I, I tell you what, we are though. We're just, and, and I'm probably the worst offender. We're just, we take it pretty seriously. And um, well, of course, and we it, wait around 22 hours. I think a lot. I think a lot of people. Yeah. One of my pet peeves watching other bands play is laughing off a mistake or. Uh, there's no laughing up there. It's like, it's for me. It's like. It's our job. And we we stay on each other. We we have arguments. Me and him argue constantly. I'm talking about little things, like hi hat accents, on certain songs. Yeah, but things. It, it, we 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 just become but, quite polished now. That we're just yeah. like we yeah. know what. After all these years, what works and what we need to do, and we we're accountable to each other. But it's it's about that because literally. If you want to do this, if there's some listeners out there that want to do this, just realize you're going to miss all the funerals and the weddings and the births and the deaths and the graduations, and you're not going to sleep in your own bed, and you're going to see some of the places in America that you don't want to see, <laughs> and you wait around for 22 hours to play. So when you are on the stage for two hours, you better play. Yeah, and I mean, it, you wait all day to well, do that. Well, that's got to yeah. be in you, too. That's and if you haven't, yeah, you, know, you just said it best. Like, I grew up. The minute I put a bass on, I was eight, nine years old, I knew what I wanted to do. And if you want to do it, you go do it. And that's part of it. All the little things, the little warts that aren't, aren't sexy about it, that comes along. That's the trade-off for getting up there and playing in front of yeah. ten to 20,000 people every night. You well, know? it's fortunate that you found your DNA early on. Rich had yeah. the same experience when he was eight or nine years old with the drums, yeah. and I'm sure you would tell yeah. you just knew this is what you wanted to do. Kurt played keys, too. And he, took <laughs> and he was an actor. <laughs> Like a lot of businesses. What? Yeah, I thought I was going to go to LA and be an actor. Uh, I'm just finding this out now. No, he, <laughs> yeah. he was in via, the, via infomercial. He was probably <laughs> musical theater. What are you talking about? Uh, I he did some acting. You know, I did some acting. I did some gigs. <laughs> Ladies Wait, and gentlemen, those things are lighting you up. Something what, every day. What do we got? Uh, really? Somebody had asked Chris oh, yeah. Davidson, he, said, he made a statement, he said, I mean, it didn't last long. Chemistry <laughs> is key and tough to find, and that's the thing is, is that essentially you guys together, especially along with basic, you are a form of a business. Mm -hmm. And when oh, yeah. that business gets to a certain point, it kind of hums along and um, is a self, uh, well-oiled machine. Mm -hmm. You know, in the beginning, not so much. It takes processes to get there. What would you impart to people coming to town? That, uh, well, Tully know. is going to tell you what he says. <laughs> hey, well, and it, I, we're laughing about this, but it's actually... you got to really... I, I tell you this. If you're going to come to town at any point, um, you, you're going to find out quickly how bad you really want to do it. Really quick. It, really quick. It's a failure business. Most of the time, you're going to get told no. Right? That's good, Kurt. It's a it failure is, business. It is. I mean, we're writing this it, down for our next book. <laughs> it's a failure business. Well, it, it is. is a failure business. It's a catchy title. It's, it's a great. truth. It is the truth. And you got to have thick skin, and it, and it has to be a part of you that's like, well, I mean, this is what I'm going to do. No matter what. This is what I'm doing. I mean, and it will, yeah. Well, how can somebody, what is? what are some of the tenets they can adopt to make it quicker and compress it? It, it is a business. I mean, I will say this. Yeah. We were... For the first 10 years in Nashville, we were never seen apart. We would, we, when we were in Los oh, Angeles, yes. we would go and yep. we would find the most 
awesome affordable leather jackets that we could get. <laughs> and we always had money for a leather jacket and, and a whiskey. cocktail. And we would go out together and we walked into a club. It was like, dum, 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 dum. I mean, we were always together and people were like, we were running a business. We were promoting yeah. well, our we skills. We were, I mean, it wasn't solely as a business thought though i mean a yeah. we we, we really like each other pleasure. yes yeah we did we mixed it and we would go out every night in town i mean we were seen together there's those guys and here it's just the truth we you know? were just honestly we were badass like we were <laughs> yes! we, we were you write we, this down we would go out <laughs> we'd go out to a show we, we, we get hard to play showcase laughing. and here's where here's where i'll swing heavy with this stuff is the fact that we would go play showcase and we would learn those songs, all oh, yeah. five. We were, you know, we weren't reading these songs. We we gave every every artist that we were showcasing for the feeling that they had their own band and they had it for years. Mm. It's I a great have, point. Have a stand up there, and a lot of these guys today are well, they lazy, iPod, and they, they go, they got their. If I, if I well, see, that was the way everybody everybody yeah, showcase it. was. A, yeah, you know, a light was, with a stand with a light on it, and then, it I'm the looking out there, and I'm like, the I'm like, this isn't inspiring. Mm. I'm going to go up, and we're going to do this, and we're going to. Slay, slay those guys because we're gonna kick ass and like we've been playing these songs for 10 years well there's about a five-year period where every label in town was hiring us to be the showcase band at 6 p.m at 12th and porter or third and lindsley or douglas corner or the sutler we were we had cartage we had a hot meal and we had good money to play a showcase for somebody and we made no matter who's standing in front mm -hmm. of us feel like they had a road worn band yeah like with we were them. their band and that that meant something to part them. of us yeah. always being together too and sticking together it was like you know hey rich gets called for a gig to do something he's like well yeah uh, me and my guys right or tell totally yeah. the yeah, same it's very way. mafia mm -hmm. and yeah. it was and then pretty soon there wasn't a question it was just like get, let's hire, let's get hire the three guys. guys yeah and they actually the the the, the title Three Kings came from one night of us actually just drinking too many Irish coffees. And I was like, you know what, guys? It's the branding and marketing in me. It's like, Three Kings. <laughs> and we laughed. Three Kings. Fairly hard. And then it just kept, we just kept referring to it. We had a, I think we had a MySpace or, you know, it was definitely yeah. in the bio. And then, got a Facebook page yeah, you know, yeah. and, and it's, it's, it's just a fun thing. Cause we, we were living together in, in the Hermitage in Donaldson. And when we had to prepare for a showcase for before the rehearsal the next day, we would go to our stations. So our stations, nice our station. bedrooms were like, boom, 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 right next to each other. So that door would close and then he would have the, everybody would be doing their homework and just running it and running it oh, and yeah. running it and I'd be getting yeah. the, the BPMs and programming loops on my little Dr. Groove box and I could get away with reading because I would always have these little charts yeah. and you know because I'm back there but these guys are on the front line they want to be <clears throat> interacting with the artists. Well, and you didn't play like you were reading. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. it was never that. Yeah. It was it's like, one thing you know sitting there it's another thing to stand up with an instrument on your shoulders with a stand in front of you with a light on it. I just can't do it. And it and it always bothered me that people would. So it was like, well, we'll go out there. And that's why we, we always, that's what I'm proud of in that. Like the, the artist and the singer or whoever's trying to get a deal, just giving them the best chance to have that success. And it, and it's a sales pitch. And that was them feeling like they had a band. Even the, whoever small part of that was, you know. You know what's really funny is um, in between, a lot of people know about the story of Aldine, how grateful we are to Aldine and Knox and the whole team and people for, you know, believing in us and letting us do what we do. Um, but in between, me playing with Pam Tillis and you guys playing with the Tim Rushlow solo career and Jason. So between Pam Tillis, Tim Rushlow solo career, and Aldine, there was a band called Rushlow. <laughs> First thought, go. <laughs> Disappointment. <laughs> okay, that's a great first thought. That's a great first thought. A lesson, lesson in what happens when, so, uh, lesson in what happens when there's control issues and when you're not allowed to be yourself. It will never work. You are it's never worked. so profound today. It's never worked. <laughs> it will never work. It doesn't work till, t it doesn't work at this moment. Well, it, it, and that, if you really want to encapsulate it, that was it. It was. It wasn't genuine. You know, no, we were too contrived. We were told to not be ourselves, really, or play like ourselves. And we went to do our live shows. It was great. It was rock and roll. There was. It was. We had great audiences. But then we got into cut a record, and you know, we were just cutting stuff. A, we weren't used to, and B, playing like we wouldn't it was play. Way, way, way polished, and you're putting inside a box. 
We were, I remember it was a big box. Our six manager, guys. manager slash co-producer. It's a lot of guys in the band. Six guys. I was I was playing, and he goes, "Man, play something Glenn Warford play." And I said, "Well, I'm not Glenn Warf. You know, so probably not gonna. That's not gonna work out well for me. You know." Uh, are you Glenn just Warf, using Glenn, Glenn Warf's name because it's the cool name to throw out, or do you really, you know what I mean? It's well, like, Glenn Warf. Yes, yeah, love Glenn amazing Warf. player. Amazing player, but but, I mean, but it's not me. I don't. He didn't do what I do. I do. I don't do what he did, and that's great. But it was just a, really, the mentality. You gotta remember what this was the mentality of it. Yeah, and the, this was this was two thousand and two, right? And the moral of it yeah. is that, or the, I guess the end result is, and I mean we talk about this a lot, and it's not trying to throw shade or anything, but the album ended up sounding. Ridiculous. Well, just like anything else, there was not there was nothing unique about it. I mean, we did play our it's very heart. soft within the box. We played our heart. Yeah, that's you know. fine. We gave we gave our best, but there just wasn't anything unique. about We were being the produced record. wrong, and we gave the producer everything he wanted, and we and we worked with that producer since then. He's a great He's engineer. Great. Yeah, um, Jeff Balding, killer engineer, yeah. killer producer. But it was just too many different variables at that point, and music was different, and it was supposed to be slicker, and we were not slick. It was. It was aggressive, and it, the songs we were playing, okay. I felt weird playing the songs. And well, it, and then, ironically, or coincidentally enough, you know, when we cut Jason's record two years later, or a year and a half later, yeah, yeah. there's like, oh, up. that's this cool, new, fresh sound. We were, the sound we were oh. trying to be in the other group. <laughs> But but you know it's 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 okay. It, it is cool to, to be in a situation where ever ever since two thousand and two we have never had to copy another person's licks to go take on the road. We yeah. literally have been tapped to play in the studio and on the road for everything we have done, which is a very very cool thing for the last fifteen years. And also, ever since two thousand and seven, that morphed into a company called New Voice mm -hmm. Entertainment. New Voice Entertainment was a it was a unique situation because literally in the entire history of Nashville, this is the first rhythm section production team in the history of Nashville because Nashville really? has a history of having a producer that calls the A team, he gets them going, yeah. and orders lunch, mm -hmm. and goes and plays golf. That was the model in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And then we came along and said, we're gonna play on the record and produce the record mm -hmm. from the floor. Yeah. And so it was a unique thing, but that grew into us producing, who were some of our clients? Some of them, a lot of them didn't work. Well, I mean, but the, and, and, I mean a couple of them did. To go back to the Russell thing real quick. As bad oh, he as, wants to talk about <laughs> Russell even more. As bad as that Come was, the, the point of that is, yeah. and with the production stuff too, is like, I still wouldn't trade a minute of it. No, it's all because I learned well, there what, so many what, things what, what not to do there. And when we started producing, took those lessons, when we were produced wrong and, and said we didn't want to do that anymore. We don't want to do it to it. And so we're producing um, and had success producing and, and some, it's a failure business. So if you, produ if you produce 50 acts, you're hoping honestly that you can get one or two to work. Oh, yeah. So so we had two number ones with a group called Thompson Square right. and we had a number one with a group called mm -hmm. Parmalee. And even with the group Parmalee, this is a band. And we said to, our, we said to ourselves, we are not going to put this these guys through having a the lead singer sing and have some session musicians right. come in. They were a band, so what we did, everybody in the band had their own coach. The bass player had a bass coach, the drummer had a drummer coach, and the band played on the record. And there's more ownership, and, and they're hits. more proud of it. And they yeah yeah. And and you know what's interesting? I'm just going to put that out there. We have really given blood, sweat, and tears, sometimes 20 hour days, multiple days in a row, to create sonic identities for people because we care about them right. and because we sweat blood. And a lot of times, if there's a little bit of not having success, it's our fault. And then they maybe move on, which has happened. And then there's also people that we produce that straight up, I mean, funny things happen, like you give them everything and they're like, you know what, I'm quitting the business. Or, <laughs> you know, I've had, I, you know, or they put out two singles and they're just like, and it's just yeah. so crazy. But it does, it is fun. To, to be part of that whole creative process. Um, and drummers, musicians, I will say, if you're producing your own records and you're playing on it, it does pay more than just playing drums for some other person, which was, that was a kind of a fun process. Yeah. Any, anything, uh, Thompson Square, Parmalee, Lindsay L, Christy Lee Cook, Blake oh, wow. Wise, 
Um, this is the list goes on. Yeah, it's just a lot of anybody else. I forgot the pots and pans. Yeah, guy. it's very. There was a time we actually were gonna, <laughs> we were going to record a comedian. A, we were going to do a live in studio comedy record. Let me just tell you this: there is a difference between being funny at a cocktail party and being a comedian. <clears throat> Lessons learned as well. There, yeah, a good lesson to anyone having success as a new producer. One thing I would change, and again, wouldn't change anything, but lesson learned. Um, we had success with Thompson Square, which is a big deal. Um, the plaques are right over there. But then what happens is you get tempted. You get when that happens, you get thrown all kinds of stuff, and you don't want to turn down what what could pay you well. Mm. Um, so we really, in my opinion, burned ourselves out on stuff that we shouldn't have produced, but at the time felt right because hey, let's make the money. You know, it's mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, you know, we straight with iron's hot. Money. You and, know? and producing it, you are helping bring someone's dreams to fruition. Yeah. But it's sometimes some bringing someone's dreams yeah. we to did. fruition we, we can, can be a, can be a lot of work. We well, we were doing twenty-hour days. So was, and our marriages were and you, feeling it. And you and you and you yeah, and our creativity. Yeah, especially mine. You you burn out though, and and it, it was hard <laughs> to get motivated. And again, there's you know, a, you know with it, it's like. You have to, I think we found this out about uh, producing tea, you have to have a connection with the artist, like this connection to really do the best work. And Trust. What's that? There has to be trust, go back to trust. Yeah, you go back to trust, and we, we were just doing a lot of things, and it just, you know, some much. of them didn't work, I think because there wasn't this yeah. complete connection there. Yeah, but I don't think we were, again, lesson learned. I, I think we, I, I know I did, I started to see more Okay, dollar signs. Then, oh my gosh, I really want to produce this person for the long haul for the for the creative spot. So, which is natural. I mean, money sometimes, unfortunately, it does change things the way you think a little bit. So, that looking back on it, if I could do it again, that that'd be one thing. Just produce smarter. You More know, in line with your DNA. You know what I mean? Yeah. But but again, I wouldn't change a moment. It's. Uh, a lesson learned. Oh, this is a really, you know, for those listeners and viewers out there, I mean, this is a, a really heartfelt story that's, you know, that's an 18 year story that actually needs to be told. And I, I don't really think we're old enough to write a memoir, but I mean, there has been <laughs> memoir worthy stuff that has happened in this last 18 years. I mean, we have done a lot of things together. But on episode seven, Michael Bird said you're only one person away from a massive shift in your life. That is common truth, pretty much any given time in anybody's life if they mm -hmm. pursue that relationship. Sure. Is it also true that you're any one situation away from sh massively well, shifting? I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Who are you guys producing? I'll say this is that like, uh, I want to just talk about evolution and things that have been happening. Like while we were producing Thompson Square, I wrote a book called Fundamentals of Drumming for Kids and Tully would be like, can you get your head back in the game? You're writing your children's <laughs> book. And I would be booking clinics because I didn't have the help. I have an administration team now that does my camps and my clinics. But at the time I was running multiple businesses and trying to play the drums and co-produce. And I wrote, so I wrote this book. And, and in that amount of time, uh, we also ended up getting a publishing deal through Magic Mustang. So, Every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, instead of me going to play drums for other people, I focused on work, developing a craft as a songwriter, and you guys did the same thing. And during that time, you guys had both uh, great success. Uh, Tully, you wrote a uh, top hit for uh, Dirk Bentley mm -hmm. called Tippin' on Back. Where yeah. did that, was that a number one song? Four. Number four. Hey. That's a hit. Dude, it's a hit, and a, a, hit. Lot, a lot of times the difference between a, he has a bar called uh, number four. <laughs> number four. So I think it's a oh, he named it really. Well, the corner of the yeah, bar. the corner of his bar. Tip it on back. Are you getting cut in on that? No. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, no. and then Kurt, Kurt, you uh, now now together. Tully and I wrote uh, Dustin's last hit, seeing red, red, which yeah. is a number one, mm -hmm. which yeah. I have to say was a really special moment for me to go to the number one party, see my friends up there. You guys both gave very awesome, heartfelt speeches. Your parents were there, your wives were there, your children were there. So cool. Um, and so now you guys are on me as a songwriter. I've got three number ones in Australia, folks. <laughs> um, and I, you know, a guy named Colt Ford cut my song, and it was licensed to That's the NFL awesome, and stuff. Dude. So, so I, it was fun. I, yeah. Not only did I learn the craft and understand the craft more, I <clears throat> there's there's some things to show for it. Yeah. Um, and you, now you guys are in love with that. You're having so much success with it. You're moving forward. Songwriting is definitely at the forefront of what you're really focusing. Yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, as far as the three of us, we've. Uh, 
you know, taken, we're all on the same path, but we all have little side roads that we've yeah. kind of taken. Yeah. And like you kind of alluded to with, uh, you know, your books and your camps and all this. Which was an adjustment for me at first, because it was like, mm -hmm. my thing was always like, full steam ahead, three kings, three, mow all it all ahead. down. Then I realized, okay, well, part of being brothers is that you, things change slightly. And so he was really passionate. Richie is very passionate um, about doing other things, you know, pursuing a lot of clinics, pursuing acting, which is another undertaking in itself of disappointment. So it's a failure business. I realized that I was, I was, <laughs> really is yeah, right. I, yeah, I realized that I was being on brotherly by not supporting his thing. So we, 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 we produce side projects and we have, and the best way to do this is to, we can't play music without our brother. So we pay Richie to come play on whatever he can't be there to produce. We produce it and he can still do his things. And so no one's, that's the best way to keep my head on without exploding. Yeah, because you guys keep, did, they did the Tyler, along with Aldine, they produced some sides on Tyler Farr right. and that were, were really nice. I want to get copies of those <laughs> to play at my clinics. Um, but it, but for whatever reason, you can't control like you know what the suits pick you know for singles and stuff. Hey, when we did Lindsay L, I still play the song What at my clinics. I think right. that was a hit. Yeah, probably was. It was. Yeah, it was that What was a hit. But yeah, there's all all little things that we've learned to. Still, same common goal. Just little things inside the yeah. house have changed. Yeah, they're definitely. These guys are going for songwriting, and I'm still very interested in songwriting. Like my friends, the Wolf Brothers, call me up and say, "Hey, our fourth record's happening. Will you come write songs?" And I'm like, "Of course." Especially since I own all my own publishing now. Yay! <laughs> um, but <laughs> but um, but yeah, and even like you know, pursuing like you know, it's. I think the consist the consistency of focus. They're like, "Oh yeah, Rich is." Yeah, Rich is out in Los Angeles. He's trying to act. But now I'm like staring at three years and I've spent, I don't know how many tens of thousands of dollars pursuing it in the smartest way. And they see, as people see that you, you I don't quit. I just keep right. going. And yeah. people will go, oh, okay. Respect. Yeah, and, and, respect. And, and, and I don't, we don't expect yeah. him to ch change that path. If, if he wants to come and say, guys, I want to produce something with you, well, we'll do it. Yeah. And, and, but, and we're not going to ask him, because I used to be like, we need you here and you're producing well there's not, something about producing that i hate and it's and it's this and i'll put it out there to the world um i would rather stick bamboo shoots up my fingernails than <laughs> than cut vocals because here's the deal it, i might be dating myself but i'm as i'm driving around in my little car and i'm listening to satellite xm through my nice speakers i'm like wow everybody in the 70s could sing and they had to sing because there was no Pro Tools. So or, Pro Tools and, play. and Pro Tools changed everything. So basically, and what's even if the singer can sing really well these days, if it's not perfectly tuned, it doesn't sound right it's because bizarre. everything is through Pro Tools now. So basically, we're taking all the fun out of like finding true artists that are true vocalists. So it's just well, and even bands oh. or artists anymore. It's not like you know with Aldine and and Michael. It's, what we do in that sense is nobody does nobody that. Does, yeah. Nobody does. It's individual. Oh, I got a, a you know a drum program. Let's put some bass on this. Yeah. I'm gonna take it in the studio. I'll overdub some guitars. I'll do some synth. And that's not a team process where you're all in the room at the same time. Something so special happens yeah. when you're all in the room at the same time. Yeah. And it's just. A, Things change. Yeah. So, yeah. anyways, I, I, they're like, "Hey, we want you to. I know you're going to be in LA this fall, but can you come in and cut drums on this?" I'm like, yeah. I'll come that's, in. that's just the best yeah, way. Just because I don't have to do vocals, and that's and people yeah. ask me to produce. They'll say, "Can you?" I was like, "Yeah." You know what my new model is, folks? You you come to me, I'll put a beautiful band together, I'll book the studio, I'll get the charts done, I'll order your food, I'll have a world, you'll be world class experience. You go home with a hard drive, doing your vocals on your own. <laughs> Go take your time with your vocals, but I ain't which doing is a it. huge part of the. It's a massive. <laughs> <laughs> producing an artist, we need, no. to, we're gonna need those but vocals. I, but, but, I, but I say here, you know, <laughs> sonically, this thing is gonna be fantastic. And then you align yourself with I've got four different, four or five different people that cut an amazing vocal mm -hmm. that they can go to. Yeah. So that's been my my new model. So right. things are shifting, but we're still the three. Kings, <laughs> let and me hang. Has anybody in. asked a question? Yeah. Do we have any traction out there? We have no traction. <laughs> Brad traction. Dawson says, "Me and my guys out here in California are being pulled four different directions by singers. How do we choose?" You mean with time? 
their time pulling you everywhere? It or it sounds like they're working with yeah. yeah. right. No showcases like that. So this guy's got a rhythm section together. That sounds like being guys. Nice. Me and my guys. So he's having trouble finding the right singer? Is that what I'm it saying? Like, it sounds like, I guess he, they're being hired by different singers. Yeah. yeah. And they just don't know which way to go. I, 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 my answer to that was just like, dude, you just kind of... Do it all until one of, one of them pops. Yeah. Play the lotto. I mean, yeah, play the field until you just feel that connection with one. If you don't, it sounds like they don't have the connection with any of them. But um, keep it's not easy just to find. Play them. I mean, yeah. you gotta just keep putting it out there. Yeah. Play with yeah. them all. And if you do find somebody that is a good singer, that's only part of it. Oh, it's, it's like it. it's, it's actually like, a minuscule. What, what's their bedside manner? What is their? Can they? Do they have an image? Are they marketable? Can are they a nice person? Remember, I mean, they're gonna work as hard as you. Oh, they have the work ethic. Is and it's mainly the same above all that to me. It's like. We have way different. Us three, we're the same in a lot, but we have completely different personalities. All three of us. But we had one common goal: was to have as mo the best success together as we could have. You know, the, if you can find the guy with the common goal, the vision, you can deal with a lot of stuff. You, we're, we used to fight all. We still fight. Love them. Not as much. Not as much. You know, there's. But we're older now. Vodka really helps. <laughs> I'm the youngest one, so I, 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 I probably, on, on a serious note, those fights were my. I was young. I mean, my fault. I was, I was, I was Irish. Yeah, young and <laughs> Irish. Because it's Irish. He fights. Yeah, put a bottle of crown out of the equation, and you know, it gets interesting. Yeah. No, but uh, well, let's not do that. So good. <laughs> but fine. Uh, if one of those singers has a common, the common vision. Because some guys might be like, well, they might be great, but like, well, I'm going to play two times a month. Well, that's not the common vision. You're out. You know, you might find guys not quite as good, but it looks great. He's like, man, I want to take over the world. Well, maybe that's your guy. Yeah, yeah you could do the vocal. If you, you know what I mean? It's got a well, work it's, ethic. It's not unlike, you know, like, this guy's kind of in a similar situation. Not a similar situation, but you watch Shark Tank, okay? Love Shark Here are these guys coming into the tank, and the entrepreneurs are looking at them, and they're basically looking at, they're, they're interviewing the guy. Yeah. The singer is kind of like the business owner, in a sense, and it all comes down to the, the personality. Okay, I buy into you. You're selling this to me. Your product's okay, but we can make this yeah. happen because you got the right personality. And he doesn't mm -hmm. need to be the thing about to, to me and it, <clears throat> so much. What is the best singer? The best singer to me is the guy with the coolest thing. It's not. A, it's not, and never will be like a singing contest. No, I mean even your favorite rock bands. I mean, very rarely are they. An amazing right. singer. I mean, you know, you hear the stories with you too. They thought Bono was a horrible singer. They're right? an ensemble. Uh, the Stones, the Stones. You too. It's, it's all right. about Guns N' Roses. It's an ensemble. You know, it's funny. I was thinking yesterday that uh, the video came out with Beach Boys. Yeah. Uh, someone isolated the vocals from "Wouldn't It Be Nice." Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's they're imperfect, but they're beautiful. Yeah. Because they are the imperfection. But music, music is imperfect. Right. And that, that that we've lost that element, which is another conversation about the music business, but. Music isn't supposed to be perfect. We're actually supposed to be talking about a little bit about the music business today. Are there any questions on that kind of stuff? Uh, well, John Hull, he's trying to make Nice, little well, John. John! I think people would be interested in hearing how you would go about weathering through the changes in the industry as a team and or individually. John. Jesus, so, John. He's all grown up. <laughs> he's so you know, now I will tell our viewers that last night we were where? <clears throat> we were in Macon, Georgia. Macon, we were in Georgia. one of the birthplaces of, of Southern rock music. We are with Jason, five hours away, playing a benefit for the Children's Hospital, and we raised, I don't know how much money, but I'm 700000 sure, $700,000 for the, the new Children's Hospital. So it was a great night, and three feet behind me was John Hall, who is my now drum tech of five years, and he's, yeah, we do a lot of stuff, fun stuff together. So what would you guys, where are we going with the industry? Well, uh, I, I, I think, I think, honestly, and this comes into some of the play of, of me and Kurt maybe concentrating so hard uh, on writing you know we all I, I love to play on sessions I I, it's, I love to do it it's I love to be in the studio the music shifting that way where it's like okay well not as many records as being made you know it's more of a singles based industry which is happening seamlessly overnight mm -hmm. it seems like it's, it's where you know we're probably playing on the last we're probably playing on some of the last records um, that is so scary. Uh, you, you can see it. You know, it's it's right there. It's happening. So, if, if as a business, you know, you you look at 
you know, live music is a huge part of the business and will always be a huge part, more, more so now than ever, I'd say, mm -hmm. the live music industry. Um, there's more ways than ever to get your music heard, but less ways to get money from it. So, so you have to tour. So as a new artist, um, unfortunately, if you're a new artist, the deals that are offered today are called 360 deals. So the so you stand to make less as an artist. Um, Basically, that means a label puts their hand yeah. in every part of your income. The label doesn't Publishing. just take. There's no record sales, so they don't just take that. They take Publishing. everything you are as, as an artist. And T-shirts. So it's it's all. I mean, music. But they're doing it in a, <clears throat> because they aren't making money, and they're trying to right. find ways to make money too. And it's really. It's people are grasping it how they're going to continue to make money, but you're right. It's you have to now tour to make your money, right. which in a way was like in the '70s. That's kind of how bands yeah. got yeah. you know started. So that's where the money's too. coming from. So that's where they're and that's cool, anyways, from, because we know? we want to play. You know, I, I told somebody I told somebody the other day something very profound. They said, I said, you know that my suitcase has never been fully unpacked for 20 years. <laughs> and they're like, really? Like, I said, I might take dirty clothes out and put clean clothes in, but the maybe it's really funny. Is my suitcase there. sits yeah. in the o room only there only in December. Usually... Only in December will yeah. I fully put my suitcase away. Yeah, because we you have we have stretches of time off now that we never had. Um, but the music business is is definitely challenging. Um, I I would be I think I think the Lord that we are dug in here because I don't know if I would want to move here. As a as a twenty one year old now, but knowing time, knowing what I know, they, if they want to do it, this is the last place to move. Well, yeah, yeah. You know. But you better. I, <clears throat> I'll say this: me and Richie differ on this. Um, Ooh, Tully says his advice is no, 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 don't no, move. No, no, no. I would I would make sure that you know what you want to do and that you're ready to do it. This is not a place to learn. Anymore, oh, you it's and not I agree a place on that. To be, it is not a place to, to be cut your teeth. to be mentored into a position because mm -hmm. uh, I get asked a lot to help. I do it too for free I'm, coffee. I, I, I have a lot of free coffee. I will mentor the hell out of you, but but coffee, you can't yeah. teach. You can't teach preparedness. You can't rush that process. You yeah. move here and you have no experience playing the style of music that you want to play, and you're expecting for people to react positively to you sitting in it. At, at the there's just less evidence to get noticed like, like when we were younger when ready. I was young you get noticed playing on a session you get noticed playing on a showcase showcases don't even really happen as much now the only thing you're not talking about is the social media aspect of everything oh, right. well that's why you're here well, John well, I mean Jim <laughs> John Jim <laughs> I was thinking of actually Jimmy John's. Wow. Jimmy. How long have you been working together? No, we always did get Jimmy John's before the show, so sorry. It was like, I'm hungry. <laughs> Jimmy John's. <laughs> Jimmy but I mean, a lot. Is it possible for an artist this day and age to even need the machine anymore? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> Great interesting enough. Awesome no, I question. mean, just one of our good friends that's now out opening for Jason <clears throat> is Kane Brown. I think he's a great example of him putting himself out there on the socials. Mm -hmm building his YouTube following, building his Instagram and everything. And he was selling, I mean this, and he's not the only one, Sam Hunt did it as well, you know. But he was selling 500,000 copies of a record that had no airplay. Right. He did it all on his own self-published. That's it's incredible. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. He has 700,000 Instagram which, followers. Which is great, but you do need still, and that's incredible, we talk about it every day. Yeah. How much time has changed, that's even possible. In country music, in, in, yes. in, in country music, you need the machine in the sense that country radio is still relevant. So you can come out and you can, you still in this genre. Oh, it's completely relevant because yeah. even with Sam right. or Kane, you still need. They need radio, even them at this point. Um, and music videos, which is good. Which we want radio to stay relevant. Um, but so you need the machine in the sense that the machine provides you with a promotion staff to work radio. So essentially, even if that even if that is all you're using them for, it is an important piece to get you to the next level. You know that probably compresses the time involved. Mm -hmm. Right. 
But if your stuff is good... I don't know if you can have success in the country genre without radio play. Mm -hmm. Right. As of right now, it's still... And now in five years, ten years? Maybe less. I don't know. Maybe yeah. less. But as of today, we're sitting here. But things are happening so quickly. Like overnight, I'm telling you, overnight, we went to a singles... We talked about this last night with Jason's manager. It's a, It seems like overnight that we have now shifted, not talking about what it's going to be, but staring at it. Like... It's a singles-based market, which depresses me because I love the album. And all people our age love the album. You know, but times change. Yeah. Um, Pendulum swings one way, it'll swing back the other. I, I hope, mean, in the I 50s, hope. it was a singles-based mm -hmm. business, too. Right. Yeah. And that's how you sold. Rock around the clock. Yeah. That brings really? another interesting question I thought of before we started. Being that you made your career and you made your stamp on the business in this day and age, um, you know, you probably wouldn't want to give it up, obviously. But, you know, what day and age would you love to have a shot at? If you could go back in time to make a career in music, what would be your favorite era to do it? The 70s. Uh, I would be, I mean, just for my age, it would be the 70s. Yeah. yeah. I think we would. Tell you, like, have, I, think, I, I think we would have destroyed, <laughs> had the world, um, a killer band, like in the late 70s early to mid 80s because it was the, what I love about the 80s was that there was some really bad stuff but they're some of my favorite stuff ever well you had metal you know? and you had new wave together but it, but it was metal but it was a great record you know synchronicity Joshua Tree stuff that it's like any genre I guess there's great music and yeah. bad music in every, yeah. in every decade but, but music was so important in the 70s and and even the one hit wonders were special you know the the, 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 the Pina Just Colada the song the musicality you know? to yeah. me in the 70s yeah. was really great in the time to make a record yeah, like that, that. That's what I wish. We, I would love to be able to go into a studio in the '70s and they say, "Here's your studio, and it's yours for six months." That's what I was going to say. The, the you know? documentary Metallica did back mm -hmm. in '91. Oh, Ten yeah. months in the studio. Right. I mean, that's like a blast. Oh yeah. yeah. But you know, they were. I mean. I don't know if I would like ten months. <laughs> I love that. You know, I, I don't know to make that. to make it's a record. Definitely. Like oh, I love it. I love it. But you know, and, and to their credit, you know, they were cutting tape, and it was like. It was making, yeah, but look what, look what, 10 months in the studio. Hey, make him remember. But uh, look, what, look what they did with the black record. Look at rumors. So maybe, maybe 10 months in the studio, I mean, I like to make that record. record is still selling 6,000 a week. I'd like to make a, uh, an album like the Eagles Greatest Hits and Rumors. Like those, like, like wow. You know, those things that, that you know, damn the torpedoes. Who says you have it? Well, I mean, you know, I, we listened to the who knows? Alpine play, playlist. We were coming yeah. back from Charlotte. Kids were all fired up because I mm -hmm. saw you guys, and you know they wanted to listen to it, and like every single song was yeah. it. I mean, and it was eighteen. Songs, I guess you don't see it when you're. In, in, I mean, in you there think about much, it. You know? We're too I mean, deep. kind of party in it. Three million records, mm -hmm. five number one songs for that time in yeah. music. That translates very well to any of our absolute favorite records. Yeah, it's, yeah, I guess it, yeah. We're too, we're too inside the box to kind yeah. of see it, and we're just being hard on ourselves. Or we were just holding ourselves to a high standard and just going out there and executing every night. But who knows, in maybe 20 years, we'll look back and go, Jason Aldean's greatest hits. Wow, we were well, there. Well, I'm definitely proud of what we did, us and Jason and Michael Knox and the guys that playing those records with us. And mm -hmm. it's, it's really a unique... Now, those records are, are higher stress, and you know, they're, they're, they're faster, they're done faster. But that's some of the magic, because Michael's. Michael's so we don't like, overthink it. He's a song producer. He's, no. but he knows. He gives us our freedom, you know. And that's, that's what makes it. Trust and freedom are the two greatest things you can have in any business. <laughs> well, letting people do what they what they're bringing their talents to. Them. Sure. You know their yeah. specialties. Um, yeah, that absolutely makes a lot of sense. This is so fun. So we've talked about the early days. We've talked about Rushlow. We've talked the early days of Jason. Everything and Jason full circle a little bit about the music business. What are we missing, Jim? Talk a little bit about the future. These guys are focusing on uh, songwriting. Well, how do you, as things are changing, what adaptations are you making in your lives and your careers for the next chapter? Well, we're working towards uh, management side. Um, am, I, am I getting cut in on that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you might be acting at that time. I don't know. Um, Playing's always, it, it's weird. We it, can act like a manager. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, we've, we've always talked about it. Back no, in the Blackberry yeah. days, I mean, I got incredible organizational skills, guys. Don't cut me out. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> now this is, this is the first that I've seen. This could be now, reality this, TV. This, this, I mean, I this, yeah. this is very similar to the conversation we had 
when we were producing, and this is what I love about Rich. I'm getting cut out. I'm getting cut out. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to be here to. Dude, I'm, I live. You were seeing live action. <laughs> This well, is locked. I mean, like, you know, it's I, about I, to go. Down. If, if artist A says, "Oh my gosh, I need this. Uh, this has happened, guys. I need this to make it happen." And I'm, I'm you're a cog, in LA. I'm a cog in the wheel. I mean, dude, I'm four hours away by Southwest Airlines. I mean, <laughs> J- Aldine's going to be doing fewer and fewer dates, and my plan is, you know, to be, you know. Well, we we, we know you want to live in LA. So so that here's the thing about being bros. This is the same conversation we had about producing and he goes am I going to be able to produce this record I said well you have to produce it to produce it so really you guys are going to take the three kings turn it into two kings <laughs> or, or, or hydra management three headed hydra and what's a, it's, what's, a, it's what's like two this, heads what, what is this is I this mean, centipede management what no, is no, that? no 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 it's like you doing a, a, a speaking engagement without us oh okay I am getting cut out but well, how uh, are you guys speaking no but like now I can speak well we're actually we're very, exactly we're very reclusive we're, this is Obviously, you know. Hey, remember us. when I got you guys that yeah, teaching gig for the U.S. military pop, yeah, yeah. cover band? I was so impressed with these guys. We went. And we did a Three Kings. And that was a lot of clinic. Fun. That was a lot of fun for the United States Air Force. But he cut us out of the clinics. Band. <laughs> no. Oh, by the way, by the way, guys, we are going to be doing a, a Three Kings workshop. It's a two-hour intensive at World Music Nashville. What? Uh, it's my buddy Denny's uh, Troy Lickhead his brother Denny Sanders has owns World Music now Is that in Bell Mead on the corner of S- the Highway 70 and all oh, that oh yeah I think there. so we're gonna coming up uh, I ran it past you in the van the other day like all things <laughs> <laughs> you forgot I need I need I need dates before the end of the okay. year we can go teach okay. Okay. I thought it was your that's gonna be so clinic, your cutting clinic. you in well we well, so, there's no I mean, payment on that getting, no, we're gonna make money okay. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna make money <laughs> No, uh, yeah, it's live action here today. <laughs> I don't even know where we were. Oh, moving forward in the music yeah. business, which is another reason why we write too. I mean, it's yeah, uh, we love it, and then. It, but it's you a know, failure business. We, how many songs we write? Well, I mean, hundreds, hundreds of songs. We, you, know, you we get three, four singles, and you out of the hundreds, that's a failure business. Acting, it's all. It's a lot of heartbreak. But it's all a failure business, especially if you don't work hard. But you know, I was you know, gonna say too, but, it's kind of the evolution of it's like, okay, we we're players. We play other people's songs that other people produce. We're like, nah, let's produce. Okay. Right. And then we're thinking, God, I don't wanna play on this horrible song, but let's write songs, you know. Right. So it's part of the evolution of creativity too. Oh, and and creating the music from this you're, having, yeah. this you're having other creative the evolution of creativity it's other ways to express ourselves in a creative way you and, know at and, the core and, of music it's yeah. like you know shoot uh, sometimes I don't want to play on somebody else's song that they wrote I want to play on my song that I wrote yeah. we've actually signed up a lot of pieces like speak Kurt Kurt and my, this is one great That's fun too, though. moment the moment we realized that or I realized that I I love playing in sessions, but I, I, I had a hard time playing on bad songs. What I thought was a bad song. Some guys, it's it's just um, punching the clock. They can, you can go and you can, I was, and that's yeah. why producing came to the forefront and writing was like, well, if I don't want to play on bad songs the rest of my life, I've got to find other ways to make sure I don't, you know? So. Yeah, you know those guys. We know they, and we've done sessions with them where they come, they literally, they pack their brown bag lunch. And that's okay. And they that's go okay. And, and it's nah. their craft, and they're mm-hmm. highly de- invested in the union, and they have a pension coming and all that. But, God, there's got to be more to life than that. <laughs> and I think that's why our love for music. <laughs> Sorry. That right I mean, there, this is awards and but all, that, But that right there is is why we've been so tight. It's like, the com- we have, we're so different, but we've had numerous common threads. And that that's one of them, like, the love of a song playing for a song yeah, you hear a Steve doing, Rose song doing the you, best. Look, you look at each other yeah. like whoa okay doing, doing the best you can for that song serving the song uh, has always been our have we gotten to the ask the vest part of this no <laughs> <laughs> I do want to ask the vest okay so this, this is uh, I treated myself to some some leather vest from my friend Henry in Los Angeles and it came back and the guy seemed to think that it's too high in the back. I mean, where's the, it? Which, which one are we over here? Or well, this, this is the main one, but we're on Facebook. So it, now, this to me. Too high? 
Well, stand normal. Yeah, stand normal. To me, it's it, a little high. Ra raise your arms up. Like you're gonna go, yeah. See, that's good. I don't know, man. It, it's it's it needs to come down another. I think it, I think it's cool for like tonight. I'm going to a nice wine dinner with friends, and I'm gonna go. It's super casual, but this kind of dresses it up a little bit. It's, it's I like looks, the vest. It looks yeah. good sitting there. I like the vest. I'm just wondering if it's it does. How about this? like three inches. No, that's good. Yeah. Well, the Maybe. funny thing is, is that you know, uh, about seven years ago, we we did a documentary and we talked yeah. about it before, and it's. Jim wants this thing out, guys. Really We've got to get it out. It's called Working the Dream. We and it's, talked about it. It's before. basically me driving around my Honda we got cut Element. Out. We, I think we got cut we out. We got cut out. You're in. No, we're in well, it, but we got it. cut out. You, you asked for You're our likeness without what? any. Talking about getting cut out. <laughs> comes up to us a month ago, says, hey, guys, I got this documentary I've been working on for 10 Seven years. years. <laughs> Seven years. It's getting cut out. It well, no, no, I mean, I put we did it, have I, to sign away our life. I, I, put it to, making... I put it to bed because I didn't think, <laughs> Nobody's making I didn't think, you know, whatever, all the people in Al Dean's organization would approve of it, but it, we, they, I think there's just a lot of, but the funny thing I think it's great. Yeah. But there is some interesting. I think it's great. Uh, you know, yeah. Jason was kind enough to be uh, a part of it, and he did a, a quick interview with us. And it's yeah. funny because uh, be sure to use the hashtag "Pick like, Rich's yeah, Brain" to, to ask questions of me or my guest. Things. And you were sitting right next to him, telling and you go, "It is the poor kid." <laughs> yeah, I have an idea. It's got you. footage of us doing finesse. I have, an, I have an idea. Oh, I watched you. it. It's yeah, yeah. great. Here, here's it's my great. challenge. Challenge, to Jim. It's the gym challenge. What I would do, per Tully, per Tully, and we do this the right way. Next year, over the next, over the next next year and the year after, you should do another one, because we're probably coming down to, you know, well we've turned down reality shows for how many ten years? years? But ten years. like you should actually come out and do it for real to really see the. Because I don't, I think part of the the truth of, about this is the warts, which. Without the warts, there's no story. How is Jim, how is Jim um, going to travel? How is it going to get approved? How is it? Uh, gonna... We'll we'll figure it out. But I'm just saying it's a, it'd be good to do it that if way. Re if you release this thing, my, I've told it, I told you before. My spidey sense is gonna, says it's going to be flipping huge. The so, documentary. I don't think there's enough of me and Kurt in it. There's a there's a, there's there's a lot a, of lot of here's there's, there's, there's some a, David Fanning in there too. There's some stuff. Great. There, I there's love some that. stuff. And David's a big part of our but lives. David was a big part of but, our lives for a but, yeah. There's too much it's long time. It, 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 well, David, are you out it's there? It's technical. It's like I just think people want to see the grit. Yeah. And not not the the blue sparkle syndrome. I love that story, but like. Oh, it's just puts. The grit part of you, are absolutely right. To make it really, to bite. And, and I think it can. We'll figure that That's out. That's the grit. You and I... Uh, Just the, uh, the, the, the... There wasn't enough... All right, I love what you do. <laughs> First of all. <laughs> God, I know I you were, you we were swayed. Well put it out. You were swayed. I'm just saying there's... there's. Uh, I mean, Mike Fry's in this thing. I know. It, uh, the time oh, the time period awesome. is great. I wish, I, hope, I wish we could document the next I really few wish, years. I really, really wish we could do it too. But I mean, it's, it's gotten so big. I mean, there's a, I mean, Jason has 100 employees. I mean, what does Vaynerchuk say? Document over create. Okay. Document. Who says that? Vaynerchuk. Huh? He's, a, he's a he's a thought leader, business development. Coach. Rich makes fun of my uh, fandom. Yeah, he he uh, he's gay for him. Sorry. Rich is lucky. Yeah. Rich is no, lucky. Rich is anything. Rich is lucky to have you. I am very good. Well, he talks true. about you. You're a good man. How much does he pay you to do this? <laughs> Hey, I cut him in. You see that bank? I am black. Are you guys really gonna like? We gotta talk about this, man. What? Over coffee, getting cut out. Buddy, we would how love you to be it? part of a management. You're gonna thing. do a man you're not, finally. But you, I you're mean, finally gonna do well, a management here, here, thing. I brought this up ten years no, ago no, no, in my no, no, Blackberry. No, here, here's the thing. I was Again, the fastest. You couldn't, you couldn't wait, possibly. I could put out fire. Here, here's what. Here's what. Here. Here's what happened. But you got it. Artist needs a drum set. Here, I got this cut. Here, here's the thing. Why you? This is part of being brothers and that freedom we've given you when you That's go, good. when you're in LA. It's going to be hard for me. When you're in LA, listen to me, when, not just recently, but the last couple of years. Yes. We've had to keep moving forward here too. So it's like. Oh, you are. You have number one songs. You have well, giant I know, ranch we're houses doing. next to Dolly Parton. <laughs> yeah, we're, just, we're moving. We've got to keep moving too. Like you have, you have dreams to be in a movie. You guys have day, I have dream communities. I have dreams to manage. Multi-million art, dollar artist. <laughs> I think there's a question that somebody asked you, Tully. Okay. If you want to answer it, sure. it's on here. 
Mm. What uh, kind of bass strings do you totally use? Totally got saying no. Bass strings you got? What kind of practice do you do every day? Kind of stuff. Okay, um, I'll tell them that. Um, hey, y'all, Anthony Pena here, Panagopoulos. Mm, nice. I enjoy all of your work. Uh, you three are class A musicians. Any advice on standing Classy? other class A? Class A. Oh shoot! You can't hear class A. <laughs> He's getting old. <laughs> Any advice on standing out to other artists and making sure people see you as the guy with the hard work ethic and the passion for the music? Oh man, how do you stand? That's, out? that's just something that just happens over a period of time. Yeah, I think you know your reputation precedes you, and the only way to develop a. A, a wonderful reputation is to just keep showing up and just creating excellence day after day after day and before you know it people will talk this is a word of mouth business good news travels fast and bad news travels ten times as fast <laughs> so you really can't have a bad day people people will slowly but surely notice your the quality of your work and somebody else asked do you have to live in Nashville to be a songwriter yes well, I would think so. It's the home writing. Christine Hearn. It's, I write songs. Do I need to live in Nashville? It's Christine's front row at all of her shows. Christine. Yeah, Christine. Yeah, yeah, Christine. Hey. She's awesome. I, sh I know that she writes songs. You can write songs wherever, wherever, you, wherever you want. But it's just, someone you, hearing them. Depends what you want to do with your songs. Yeah, I mean, if if you want to be in the business of songwriting, yes, you should be in uh, a major yeah, LA, music city. Yeah. Yeah, because you know, basically, you can write an amazing song, but it's just going to sit in, in, a, in a hard drive. You know, any artist or label would not take any unsolicited music to listen to. That's so the only way to get your songs heard is to start knowing the other songwriters and all the gatekeepers, mm -hmm. which means probably living where that those things exist. What was that question, Jim? Did you have one for me or something? Uh, for you, it was basically asking about. I'm going to find it here. How your daily practice routine and regimen. Um, Make music. Now, basically, on, on a serious note, over the years, I play a lot of five string basses, and over the years, getting older and my wrists get really tight. So these days, I'll sit um, about an hour a day, whether it's if I'm at home, I do it late at night, or if I'm on the road, I do it in the morning before the show. Lots of just exercises on the neck, just stuff that you would do when you're learning to play, like a lot of scales just up and down the neck to keep your fingers loose in your wrist loose because over the years like I find more more than ever that I get tightness in my wrist and my hands. It's interesting so, that your wrist is always like this mm -hmm. as a bass player. It's like that can't like this thing can mm -hmm. be good. So and, and so <laughs> and, and you you where your strap low and stuff gets tight as you get older. So you you know, I try to do that. Do you inch up the bass over time? He will never I, do, I that. No, do that. No, he inches it down. Do I go lower. The Berkeley? <laughs> yeah. I don't, the, I'll take the pain for the high bass? strap. You wanna kill ants? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah. No, uh, yeah, no Berkeley this strap. Is this is, but this is really this is, you can't so rock. Fun, right? I'm sorry. This is not Tom Morello. Yeah, you're right. He might be one of the only. John Petrucci. He's yeah. really, he's really, really good. That Morello guy. He's unique. Unique. Oh, we are wrapping up, so we really do hope you've enjoyed episode eight of Pick Rich's Brain. My illustrious guests, the three kings, Kurt Allison, Tully Kennedy. Probably the best way to find them is to look them up at the current platform all the kids are on Instagram. And of course, if you have any questions for them, you know, check me out on all the platforms. I'm just Rich Redmond, R-E-D-M-O-N-D, -E on all of the platforms. But we really appreciate you tuning in. Be sure to look for the show on my website under Media Podcasts, Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, and of course YouTube. And we will see you. Stitcher is a great place where they where that houses a lot of podcasts. Yeah. yeah so we really do appreciate it. Keep in touch, and we'll see you next week. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah,